Now to a CNN exclusive, the Department of Justice may be taking steps to indict music mogul Sean Diddy Combs. Two sources close to the investigation tell us that a federal grand jury may soon hear from Diddy's accusers. Since November, Combs has been named in eight <laughs> civil lawsuits, seven of them directly accusing him of sexual assault. It looks like Diddy's new marriage is already in trouble, in case you missed it. His wife and newborn mother, Dana Tran, notified the authorities in order to save his reputation, according to reports. Last week, there were claims that Diddy and Dana got married. However, sources now believe that Diddy pushed the marriage in order to prevent Dana from releasing any bad information about him, since he is aware that he may face allegations from a grand jury. However, according to a second insider, Dana is frightened about Diddy and the possible damage he may inflict on her. Consequently, she must speak out and execute self-defense measures without delay. There will be anarchy nevertheless, we should first evaluate it as Dana has divulged several fears to us. Despite the fact that we have not mentioned Diddy and his shenanigans in some time, it looks that his situation is not better. He is apparently aware that the police are investigating him, since he seems to be marrying his newborn mother, Dana Tran, soon afterward. In reality, the situation has worsened. Dana is presently the mother of Diddy's last kid, Love Combs, and the birth astonished us since we had previously assumed that Diddy had quit having children at the age of 16. Yet, despite the fact that Diddy and Dana had been co-parenting for a year, we had not thought that they were still together which is why the news of their marriage was so surprising. It didn't take long for spectators to notice he was probably married to avoid having Dana testify against him when the authorities brought him up on many violations. I'm not sure if you've heard, but claims are circulating that the government has summoned a grand jury and is actively chasing witnesses to depose against him. The nuptials seemed weird as, before we knew it, he and Dana were married. This is because, theoretically, she cannot be called to depose against them if she is married. In any case, Dana has been sporting a ring in a few recent Instagram images. However, this merely helped to feed the claims further. One insider endeavored to deny the existence of Diddy's marriage and dismiss the charges, but a second source corroborated Diddy and Dana's rushed wedding, and it looks like Diddy did all in his power to keep Dana from spilling the tea on him. And this makes me doubt how much info Dana has on him, as if he's willing to forsake his bachelorhood and marry her, she must know a lot about him. To be honest, we shouldn't be startled given in recent weeks even more absurd charges have appeared against him. It expands beyond the seven or eight instances that he claimed to have, I'm talking to the fresh evidence that has arisen against him. As you can see as part of their probe, the authorities have done a lot of research on Diddy to put it plainly, they have uncovered a lot of tea. For this documentary, 50 Cent also undertook exhaustive research on Diddy and uncovered some really horrible evidence, including the claim that Diddy killed Kim Porter's closest friend, Erica Kennedy. Everything about Erica's death appears unusual, hence her death has always been a riddle. Her unfortunate and unexpected death appeared to have no explanation, and it's most plausible that she was on I'll Live when she passed. Erica came to fame in the 2000s working in writing, blogging, and public relations for prominent fashion luminaries such as Tommy Hilfiger and Diddy Shay John. She had a deep relationship with Kim Porter but she was equally committed to Kimora Lee Simmons. In fact, Erica was designated godmother to Kimora's children and she and Kim Porter were also attendants at Kim Moore's wedding to Russell Simmons. Given how close Erica was to Kim Porter, one would expect Diddy to act appropriately around her. Yes, but the rumors stated differently. Many people think that Diddy inspired Erica's best-selling novel Bling, which she authored in 2004. The novel offers a full, in-depth look at the music business, with a typical main character a Florida-based hip-hop billionaire who contracts a young female artist to his label and then seeks to regulate her life. It reminds me suspiciously of Diddy's connections with Cassie and later Kim Porter. Erica even made a link between Cassie and Diddy's present position and the narrative. Cassie Diddy, the undercover agent, is pretty mean-spirited, which worries me. So, I summon this. Erica was one of the few persons who intended to expose Diddy at the time, but she realized she had to move with care because Diddy was not the sort of guy who wanted to be exposed. Given what we know about Diddy, Erica was intelligent enough to avoid providing too much information, but tragically, it was inadequate to protect her. In the end, Diddy was rightly upset because the character in Erica's novel, Bling, was such a precise representation of him. According to his circle sources, he was enraged and refused to stop ranting about wanting to silence her. As previously noted, Eric was among the first to provide observations concerning the dubious characteristics of Diddy's parties and lifestyle in 2004, while most others avoided tackling such matters at all. Regarding her book, she remarked, everyone was raving about how scandalous it was, I didn't realize what the fundamental problem was. I was convinced that I could produce an essay about a P. Diddy party and exhibit these folks as the actual center of scandal.
I'm not sure what the circumstances were if there wasn't an evidence signal that she wanted to testify and knew a lot about Diddy. Erica's demise was stunning and it left many people puzzled. Her popularity preceded her and she wanted to share more facts about Diddy in a future book. Unfortunately, she died in June 2012 under unexplained circumstances, and to further muddle things, the authorities have never divulged the official reason of her death, only guessing that she killed suicide. This level of secrecy is rare, especially considering that it is normal for even renowned persons to reveal the reason of dying. Because of the secret nature of Erica's case, there have been speculations that more criminal actions are taking place. People were confused and suspicious about her demise, prompting requests for a comprehensive inquiry. Although some claim sources indicated Erica had been suffering from sadness for some time, many people now dispute the official version due to the strange and disconcerting way in which her death was handled. And someone pretended to be a buddy and wrote, I'm not aware how Erica passed away. I am aware that she, like me, has felt sadness. We never expressed our personal experiences with sadness in detail. Instead, we occasionally deployed ambiguous terminology to illustrate its implications. When I got a call from her, she would casually say that she hadn't changed out of her sweatpants and that it was extremely dark in her apartment. She carried on that week, we developed a visceral trust for one another akin to that of veterans of battle. If Erica truly committed suicide, it was most likely the outcome of a horrific day, the type of day that may be the worst day ever for a depressed person. Beth Henley's 1978 somber comedy Crimes of the Heart depicts a day like this for the three sisters left to face their mother's death, who hangs herself after leaving a message. My day was not terrific. She went on to clarify that, while I may never know what happened to Erica, I don't feel I need to because I know she bore a weight that many of us black women, authors and people in general bear. All she needed to do was get. She remarked, the branding is correct. But I wish perhaps for myself as well that she had learned that her authentic personality and what she stood for were far more than a secret branding formula. Is it just me, or is there something weird about the way this individual maintains they aren't close to Erica while claiming they don't need to know what happened to their alleged friend? Do you honestly assume that a respectable friend would desire every detail when a loved one goes away? And let's not even get into how confident they are that Erica took severe steps because she was in such a miserable situation. Erica was truly close to Kim Porter and Kimora Lee, who noted that she would never be alive herself and that Erica was a great celebrity who embraced life. As a result, as time passed, the case simply vanished, leaving no one aware of the exact circumstances. However, some suspect that Diddy, like Kim Porter, paid to keep Erica's plight hidden and may have played an involvement in her dying. It surely increases my concerns, considering Kim Porter's unusual dying while working on a Diddy book. As Kimora Lee rose to protect Cassie from Diddy, her house caught fire. Indeed, Kimora observed Diddy's harshness firsthand. 2 plus 2, 4. She had seen him touch Kim and he had even tried to pursue her while she was pregnant. Is it truly possible to believe? According to press accounts, when Kimura said something to Combs, he threatened to hurt her, ending in a catastrophic cloud burst. And I was pregnant for a while, Kimura revealed. It appears Kimura was about to mention something about Diddy. As you sow, so shall you reap, she added, throwing a shadow over him following Cassie's lawsuit rejection. She must have watched the case diligently as well as she shared a vintage image of Kim Porter with hearts on it when Cassie and Diddy reached an agreement. Kimura also considered developing a female clique to aggressively promote other women. Raise your hands if you want in, as Diddy was already being dragged through the earth and her flinging obscenities at him simply made him appear worse. If you feel that there are adequate persons acquiring coats nowadays, it is because Kimura was one of Kim Porter's closest pals. Unexpectedly, Kimura's house caught fire. Fortunately, she and her children were secure. My house caught fire, she said. I am okay, and so are the kids. I have no words to explain how thankful I am to all of the battalions, ladders, and units who aided us for several hours today and may have saved our lives. Thank you, yet according to recent sources, Diddy reportedly killed more people than merely Erica for speaking about him in her book. A fresh idea claims that Diddy may have been engaged in Terrence Dean's sad fate. The author of the book about Diddy's life is someone you know. Terence's peculiar demise was evocative of Erica Kennedy's narrative. He, like Erica, had been gone from work for several days when authorities discovered him deceased at home during a health check. His reason of death is still undetermined. In his book Mogul, Dean delves thoroughly into the life of a hip-hop heavyweight, including all of the illicit methods he took to ascend to prominence. With the exception of Pop, who is purportedly based on Andre Hensel, the person who first introduced Diddy to the entertainment world, the characters are almost too apparent, of one chapter of the novel, Mainstream. Voicing such remarks after ingesting some deed to attain the summit. However, many of them did and continue to do so. Believe me, there were always youthful, new, rough-necked people prepared to go to any extent to earn a record contract, a movie role, or any attention. 
Some even believe that because they are brighter than everyone else, they will be able to flourish without having to deal with their homosexual sibling. As I already indicated, we are nearly continuously present in all sectors of this enterprise. We are acquainted with one another. With a fast phone contact, we may either support you, remain where you are, or bring you down. Another portion of the book states that the mogul had a romantic relationship with Pops in return for his reputation. The text suggests that if you unbuckle my trousers, they will descend down to my ankles. I was strong, it was experiencing difficulties with the material in my undergarments, my was it an offer that would put an end to the years I had spent suffering and endeavoring to accomplish in my sector, as well as my chance at a major windfall. I needed to consume a lot. I wanted the person who was seated there sniffing at my crotches, anxious to make it happen, and I wanted to hear my music on the radio. I heard my own words for the first time. The words erupted from my core, passed down my esophagus, and escaped my lips. This is exactly congruent with what Jaguar purportedly disclosed about Andre Hensel, according to Diddy. However, a recurrent pattern appears to exist here. Indeed, the overwhelming number of authors who have written novels about Diddy and abruptly perish in specific conditions raises some concerns, doesn't it? Not only are there homicide accusations against him, but there are also reports that he has touched others, particularly those who now work for him, and the majority of them are too terrified to come out. Capricorn, his former associate, presumably intends to depose against him in front of a grand jury, Diddy's current major operation. Suj Knight was the first to disclose specifics about Diddy's roughing up of Capricorn. Shug had aided Cassie conceal her romance with Juvenile Koi. It's nothing new, unlike his earlier revelation about a lady called Cassie or whatever. Capricorn was one among his aides, he observed that the Capricorn cat was keeping silent about whether or not she was playing with Kuai. Puffy alleged that Capricorn had intended to lodge a police complaint against Diddy, but someone from Interscope Records intervened and paid her off. After Cassie's litigation became public, Capricorn launched an attack on Diddy as well. She agreed with Suj that the firm had concealed an end die for far too long and that he should be held responsible for his conduct. She wrote on Twitter, don't follow those who do evil and don't follow the path of the wicked avoid that road at all costs turn around and take another route. Proverbs 4.14 encourages us to keep entrances wide. You must be completely prepared to give up the money. 2011 was a terrible year. Now let's discuss the context. All of this occurred in 2011 and her admission that it was disagreeable makes me infer that much more had to happen than she was letting on. She went on to accuse the corporation of allowing Diddy's inappropriate conduct and covering it up as she observed him harm women in his immediate proximity. For the past 11 years of my life, she added, I had to contend with everyone's insane dedication to the demon and that black women would ultimately become the sacrifice. I pray this comes to an end. I don't think much of any of you if you can't keep your head down and act like everything is okay, discontinue attempting. Finally, she continued, they'll skin you, baby girl, wear you, and then act like they never wanted the skin. Kim was the one person who remained steadfast during the most difficult circumstances. Personally, I am fairly sensitive. I pray it is flawless. I am undeserving of this ripoff. Okay, given how much Capricorn despises Diddy, it's not surprising that she's willing to testify against him. Surprisingly, Azalea Banks acknowledged that Diddy had assaulted Cassie and other women. She even mentioned that she had seen Diddy contact Cassie. Diddy once beat her so mercilessly that he sent her on a three-week vacation to Hawaii, assuring sure no one saw or inquired how her face had grown so hideous. Ava, I'm a Scorpio. No, 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 what's your last name? Ava. What's your other last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. I want, you, I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. you. But you still have beautiful parents that mature my child also. Please, please tell the story. So, I was on the streets. And then Papa Coon decided that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with the stairs. Adopted kids and everybody else adopted kids, Charlie Theron, everybody's ever adopted Sandra Bullock. I adopted you because I felt that you could, you know, um, enjoy also having a black parent to take care of you and help you out. So, um, 
Um, just clarify, because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so <laughs> I, I play with the kids, and I got permission from your mother. To say all of that, just make it it's crazy out here. Um, well, I met Jackie and Delilah when I was six months old. Six months. <laughs> and six then months. basically uh, sisters, um, four Sisters. Six months. So. Six months. I always come over. Yes. And, and it's Ava Brioni Combs. Come on. Diddy made a tremendous show about adopting her in 2020, but she hasn't talked about it since. It appears that she vanished completely for a moment, but following Diddy's essay claims, a lot of insiders have started to believe that Ava had a horrendous tragedy and that Diddy was her victim. You may be querying why Dana Tran consented to marry Diddy, knowing who he is and the allegations against him. According to a source, Diddy compelled Dina to marry him against her will because he wanted to protect her and would do everything to get his way, even if it meant using someone else to cover his back. Dina had no say in the marriage. You know, followers have been assaulting this sham marriage with obscenities like Diddy he did all of this without a doubt and I believe he is doing so today more than ever. He also had an involvement in Tupac's homicide, he reportedly blasted up Kid C's home as he is a vile man in every manner. While a youth was pimping and tormenting Cassie on a boat, breaching Porter's restrictions, stealing from his artist and failing to warn little Kim that MJ wanted to work with him, the vehicle was transporting orgies with elderly women. Now that the evil in that individual has finally reached him, Diddy is a really dreadful person who managed to escape the horrific forest and join our world. I hope the survivors find justice, calm and healing, and that they can pursue him down. Even though I believe this is a strange and uncomfortable circumstance, I wanted to hear what you thought. After witnessing the accompanying video, kindly share your opinions in the comments section below.